Hey Geometry, um, today we're talking about scale factors. So uh, last lesson we talked about the triangle side splitter theorem um, and we're going to use that to prove dilation theorem. But um, dilation, so things get bigger and smaller, right? So if a dilation with center zero and a scale factor of r sends a point P to P prime and a point Q to Q prime. That means the absolute value of P prime Q prime, goodness prime, equals the scale factor times PQ. Okay, pure multiplication, right? Um, also, if the scale factor is not equal to 1 and O, P, and Q are the vertices of a triangle, then line PQ is going to be parallel to PQ prime. Sorry, P prime, Q prime. Okay, if we scale something, dilation, those are parallel, even if it gets bigger. P prime, Q prime, P prime, Q prime. Cool. So in the previous lesson, we learned about triangle side splitter theorem which, as I said, we are going to use to prove the dilation theorem. Um, dilation theorem, at this point, um, we're talking about it because you guys haven't quite started talking about similarity yet. So we're working towards a discussion on similarity, which is different from congruence. Okay, congruence is when things are equal. Similarity is when they are similar. <laughs> um, so let's get into it. Okay, so opening exercise. Quick write. That means that we're going to like write as fast as we can everything that comes to mind. That's what we would do if we were in class, but we're not in class, so let's just talk about it together. Um, purpose for a quick write is for you guys to just bring to the forefront all the information you can recall about a particular topic. I would call it brainstorming, but that's okay. Um, so let's really quick talk about what we know about um, how a figure is transformed under dilation with a scale factor of one, greater than one, and a fraction. So I brainstormed, and this is what I got. I typed it because it was a lot of words, and my handwriting with my stuff is not the best. You'll probably agree. So what we just talked about, I've got two things. Well, three things. First, I have triangle ABC. Scale factor of 1, I also have triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime. Okay, my scale factor of 1 didn't change. Triangle ABC and triangle A prime, B prime, and C prime. My scale factor here is, that was bad between 0 and 1. Okay, it got smaller, right? And then we look at triangle A, B, C. A prime, B prime, C prime. My scale factor is bigger than 1, so my triangle got bigger. Please note, I did not include the centers 
Oops. I did not include the center, therefore these are not to scale. I was just giving you a picture. All right, um, a little discussion. And I know the discussion isn't very fun, but that's okay. Dilation theorem. If a dilation with center O and scale factor R sends P to P prime and Q to Q prime, then the absolute value, so the distance PQ is equal to the scale factor times rewind. Then the distance, which is the absolute value of P prime to Q prime, is equal to the scale factor times the absolute value of PQ, which is the distance PQ. Okay, we say if that's P to Q, the measurement has to be the absolute value because we don't have negative measurements. I'm not sure why we are introducing absolute value at this point, but that's okay. It just means that the measurement, um, the distance from P to Q. Furthermore, if the scale factor is not equal to one and O, P, and Q are the vertices of a triangle, so I, drew, I drew this before, P, Q, O, then if my R, my scale factor is not equal to one, um, these are parallel, right? Now consider a dilation theorem where OP and Q are the vertices of triangle OPQ. We just did this. Oh, no, we didn't. Since P prime and Q prime come from a dilation with a scale factor R and center O, we have um, some measurements that are proportional. Let me give you a picture. A better picture. P prime. All right, so we're talking about this right here. Dilation. Um, we have the distance from, let's see if we can do this. The distance from O to P prime. One second, sorry. That's good. Okay, so we have the distance from O to P prime over O to P is equal to O to Q prime over O to Q. Okay, these are proportions. And if we did this division, we would get our scale factor. Okay, we're going to use this a lot today. So there are two cases that arise. Recall what you wrote in your quick write. You must consider the case when r is greater than 1, which is what we did here, and when r is between 0 and 1, which we would just have p double prime, q double prime. But the same rules um, hold true. All right, we have a proof, but don't worry, I'm doing the proof. And we are going to um, just glaze over the second proof. Not because it's not important, only because we're fine, okay? We'll be fine. All right, first of all, we have our triangle. Um, our first statement, a dilation with center O and scale factor R sends point P to P prime and Q to Q prime. Um, this is given because it's in the drawing. Um, secondly, we just learned this one, okay? We just went over it. So it's the definition of dilation. Um, the next thing we learned is that those two segments are parallel, and we learned that yesterday because of our side splitter theorem. 
I believe it's called the triangle side splitter theorem. Oh, I would go ahead and put this in my classwork. Okay, this would be important, but you're just copying it down as I write it, so. Dilation with center P in scale factor P, P prime over P O sends, let's highlight it, O to P prime and Q to R. Okay, a dilation with center P. So center P, let's do this. And scale factor PP prime over PO sends point O to P prime and Q to R. So we went in this direction. Okay, the reason there, sorry, I'm just gathering my thoughts. Um, oh, I'm in round red now, sorry. Definition of dilation again. Okay, the next part, um, now those segments are, are parallel because of our triangle side splitter theorem. Now the next thing we're going to do is look at this piece right there. What does that look like? I've got parallel sides and parallel sides. I think I have a parallelogram. Hey look, our P prime Q prime Q is a parallelogram. Right there. And my reason here is, oops, I'm in black shot highlighter, sorry. Definition of parallelogram. When you have two opposite sides that are parallel, actually a pair, I've got two and two. So opposite sides are parallel and opposite sides are parallel. We know we have a parallelogram. RQ is equal to P prime Q prime. We have RQ is equal to P prime Q prime. That is also um, definition of a parallelogram. So we have opposite sides. of a parallelogram are equal. And then we have um, RQ over PQ. RQ over PQ. There we go. RQ over PQ equals P prime O over P O. This one is super duper important. We're gonna be using this all over our problem set today. Okay, it's a proportion um, on a triangle and it's really, really helpful to solve for lengths of sides of a triangle. So super duper important, going to use it today. And this is just um, triangle side splitter theorem. It just means our sides are, spit, are split proportionally. Okay, now we have RQ over PQ equals R we just substituted. If you look back to line two. Okay, you have it written in front of you so it's easier for you to look to line two. Line two just states a few um, proportions. Now number 10, multiplication, property of equality, and then we have this last one which is substitution. If you look over to line seven, which is on the previous slide, it's cool. So we conclude it. We've got um, when R, so when the scale factor for dilation is between 
0 and 1. The dilation theorem um, just proved everything. So I had a triangle. Um, we're going to label it something different. A, B, and C. D, E, and C. These are parallel. Um, B, E splits the triangle proportionally. And what we need to remember is, let's see, AB over AC is proportional to DE over DC, just as an example. We can also use the lengths of those segments. And I can say, let's see, um, CB over Y is proportional to CA over X. Okay, but we'll get into some examples like that. But this is where I starred the previous slide, that very important, and it's how we can solve the lengths of sides of your triangle. Okay, let's look at this one. Um, actually, this is proof case two. This is when um, r is greater than one. Okay, we're gonna skip through this. Um, we're actually gonna skip over this um, because the last proof was pretty detailed and I think we're good. We're going to use the information now. So produce a scale drawing of triangle LMN using either the ratio or the parallel method with point M as the center and a scale factor of 3 halves. So what I did here, I mean if M is our center, draw a ray out an array out um, measure m n let's see when I did that I got 4.9 that's terrible 4.9 centimeters and then I multiplied that by 3 halves I got 7.35. So MN was 4.9, and then MN prime was 7.35. Oops, that's a 7. I use the parallel method because I really like the parallel method. Way easier to use than the ratio method. Drew a line over here. And I got L prime. Okay, let me show you. Okay, there we go. It looks awesome, doesn't it? I bet yours will look the same. Now again, this is a construction. You don't need to accurately draw every detail. Just chill, make sure you know how to do it. And if you have problems doing your problem set, that's the perfect time to ask me a question. Perfect. Okay, use the dilation theorem to predict the length of L prime N prime. Okay, so we know that L prime N prime is going to be equal to the scale factor times Ln. So if I measured um, Ln as 5.55, because I have a hard time sometimes, is it 5.5, 5.6, I don't know. So I just go for the middle, times 3 halves. That actually gives me 8.4. Then I measured L prime, N prime, and I got, oh, actually, rewind. Sorry, let's do the math first. I gave you my measurements. So um, I measured LN, and I got 5.55. And if I multiply that by 3 halves, 3 halves, I get 8.3. 3. Okay, I measured... L prime, N prime, and I got 8.4. That's pretty close. I'm okay with that. Close enough. Okay, 
Does the dilation theorem appear to hold true? Yes, because my calculated one and my measured one are pretty close, not petty close, pretty close. All right, next, produce a scale drawing of triangle X, Y, Z with point X as the center. That means we just don't have an O. So if point X is the center, um, and a scale factor of a fourth. So all I did here, I measured with my handy dandy ruler what X, Y was. And then I multiplied it by one fourth and I got x prime, y prime, 1.4. So mark a dot for 1.4, and um, I used the parallel method. Got a line here, so this is y prime, z prime. Cool? So here we know that I measured x, y, and it's going to be proportional to x prime, y prime. My scale factor was one fourth. Okay, we didn't know what this measurement was going to be, but I knew what this one was. I measured it. So I can do 5.65 over x prime, y prime, because we don't know what it is is equal to 1 over 4. I just cross multiply these. That's just how I work. That's how my mind works, I guess. Okay, solve and I get x prime y prime is equal to 1.4. That's how I knew what to measure and I knew my answer would be correct. Cool? Awesome. So if you can try to set up some proportions, and I honestly would love to help you tomorrow because I don't think we did many examples in the uh, classwork, but um, there are lots of examples in your problem set, and it'll be great. Okay, given the diagram below, determine if triangle DEF is a scale drawing of triangle DGH. Explain why or why not. So let's go ahead and check some of these ratios. If you remember, okay, DG over 3.2. So DG over DE should give us a ratio. So I have 3.75 plus 3.2 over 3.2. What's that give us? I already did the math. Where's my work? Uh, all of my work is upside down. Because if you read the problem, reading the problem is very, very important. It says... DEF is a scale drawing of DGH. So DEF is a scale drawing of DGH. So things should get smaller. That means we need to, um, to make sure we do the division in the right order. So I'm going to do 3.2 over 3.75 plus 3.2. Do that division and I get 0.46 is my scale factor, which I could put into a um, fraction, but we're, good. we're okay with decimals. Now let's check this one. So, okay, these lines should also be proportional. So if I check it, I'm going to have 5.9 over 11.9. Do the math, and that gives me 4.96. Okay, those don't match. I could stop there because I'm good, right? But let's see if we can check another one. Oh. If you remember, I can also do the sides, like this segment over that segment, and let me get a different color here, this whole segment over this whole segment. Okay, let's check those ratios. I know it doesn't matter, but we're still going to check, so let's do the blue one. Oh, I'm in highlighter. 3.2 over 5.9. That gives us 0.54. Still not right. And then the last one, we have 3.2 plus 3.75 over 
11.9 and that gave me 0.58 so none of my ratios match and that is my why or why not okay because those drawings are not um, scale and that's it we're done